the server on which you run the DNS service is called a DNS or name server. Based on how the DNS service is configured on it, it can be classified into six types. These types are the resolver system or caching only DNS server, forwarding DNS server, primary authoritative only DNS server, secondary authoritative only DNS server, public DNS server, and private DNS server. Let's understand the meaning of each type in detail. All operating systems include a resolver service. Administrators can configure it to communicate with DNS servers for name resolution. But it is not an optimized way. Let's understand it through an example. Suppose there are five computers in a network. By default, they all will communicate with DNS servers for name resolution. It creates lots of network traffic and consumes precious network bandwidth and hardware resources of all computers. To optimize this network, administrators can delegate the responsibility of name resolution to a single computer. You can call this computer a resolver computer or a resolver system. Once the resolver system is configured, all other computers do not need to communicate with DNS servers directly. They send their queries to the resolver system. The resolver system resolves each query and answers the requester system. The resolver system also caches the answer for further use. If it receives a query for the same name, it resolves the query from the cache. There are two types of DNS queries, recursive and non-recursive. In a recursive query, the request sender device asks the request receiver device to resolve a name on its behalf. Usually, it is used to transfer the workload of the name resolution process from the sender device to the receiver device. In a non-recursive query, the request sender device asks the request receiver device to translate a name or provide information about the device that can translate it. If the request receiver device knows the IP address of the requested name, it translates the name. If it does not know the IP address of the requested name, it replies with a referral. A referral is a list of DNS servers that the requester system can further use to resolve the name. The requester system uses another non-recursive query to resolve the name from the referred DNS server. It repeats this process until it gets the answer. When it gets the answer, it saves the answer in the cache and replies to the original request generator system. If it receives another query for the same name, it replies from the cache. A caching-only DNS server is a resolver system. It accepts recursive requests from clients, contacts all configured DNS servers using non-recursive queries in a sequence until it gets the answer to each request, stores the answers in the cache, and replies to the requester clients. When it receives a request from a client, it first tries to resolve that request from the cache. If it fails to resolve the name, only then it contacts the configured DNS server to resolve that name. It stores the answer from each DNS server in the cache for further use. Let's understand it through an example. Suppose an end device wants to know the IP address of google.com. For this, it sends a recursive query to the resolver system. To translate this name for the end device, the resolver system sends a non-recursive query to the configured DNS server. If the DNS server knows the IP address associated with the name google.com, it answers the query. If it does not know the IP address associated with the name google.com, it provides a referral to the name server that may know it. The resolver system checks the query's response. If it contains the referral, it sends another non-recursive to the referral and follows the response. If the response contains the answer, it caches the answer and forwards it to the end device. Next time, when it receives a recursive query for the name google.com, it resolves that query for the cache. Since it stores answers in the cache and uses them to resolve names, it is called a caching-only DNS server. A forwarding DNS server is also a caching-only server, but it does not resolve queries. It forwards them to the next caching-only server in the hierarchy. The caching-only server communicates with configured DNS servers and resolves queries. It saves the answers in the cache and replies to the forwarding DNS server. The forwarding DNS server also caches the result and replies to requester systems. Let's take an example. A company has its main office in the USA and a branch office in Japan. The company uses a caching-only DNS server in its main office. Computers of both offices are configured to use the caching-only DNS server for name resolutions. Because of the physical distance, computers located in Japan office take more time to retrieve information from the caching-only DNS server than the computers located in the USA office. Since they spent more time resolving names, they work slower than the computer located in the USA office. To improve their speed, 
the company can use a forwarding DNS server at the Japan office. Since a forwarding DNS server only saves the answers it receives from the caching-only DNS server and does not actively communicate with DNS servers to translate the name, it needs minimal hardware resources. The company can use any spare or unused system for it. Once a forwarding DNS is implemented, the Japan office's computers do not need to communicate with the caching-only DNS server located in the USA. They send recursive queries to the forwarding DNS server. The forwarding DNS forwards them to the caching-only DNS server. The caching-only DNS server resolves queries and replies to the forwarding DNS server. The forwarding DNS server saves answers in the cache. It uses that cache to resolve further queries. This implementation reduces the time the Japan office's computers need to resolve queries. A caching-only DNS server resolves queries while a forwarding DNS server does not resolve queries. In the name resolution process, a caching-only DNS server performs two tasks, resolving queries and caching the result while a forwarding DNS performs only one task, caching the result. A forwarding DNS server does not resolve queries. It forwards them to the caching-only DNS server. A caching-only server resolves queries. It does not forward them to the next DNS server. A forwarding DNS server uses only recursive queries. A caching-only DNS server uses both recursive and non-recursive queries. Both accept recursive queries. Both don't save any zone files. Both cache the results. In the DNS system, only authoritative DNS servers resolve queries. To resolve queries, they use zone files. Zone files are simple text files. They store resource records and referral lists. Resource records map IP addresses with names. Referral lists define the IP addresses of the next DNS servers in the hierarchy. When it receives a DNS query, it checks resource records in zone files. If it finds the requested information, it provides that information to the requester. If it does not find the requested information, it checks referral lists. If the referral list is empty, it sends an error message to the requester indicating that the requested information is not available on this server. If the referral list contains the IP addresses of one or more DNS servers, it provides that list to the requester. The requester can contact them to resolve the query. In this way, a requester can receive three types of responses to its query from an authoritative DNS server. These types are the answer to the query, referral to the next DNS servers, and error. If the authoritative DNS server has the requested information in its zone files, it receives the answer to the query. If the authoritative DNS server does not have the requested information in its zone files but has addresses of the next authoritative servers in the referral list, it receives that referral list. If the authoritative DNS server does not have the requested information in its zone files as well as has no address in the referral list, it receives a requested information not found error. An authoritative only DNS server performs the following tasks. It saves zone files for domains. It saves a list of referral DNS servers. It accepts non-recursive queries. For each request, it checks zone files. If it finds requested information in zone files, it provides that information to the requester. If it does not find the requested information, it checks the referral list. If the referral list contains the IP addresses of one or more DNS servers, it provides that list to the requester. The requester can contact them to resolve the query. If the referral list is empty, it sends an error message to the requester indicating that the requested information is not available on this server. Authoritative-only DNS servers are critical for the network. They store zone files and referral links. If an authoritative server fails, all domains whose zone files and referral links are saved on it become inaccessible. Because of this, administrators always configure a backup server for each authoritative server. If a backup authoritative server is configured, the main server is called as primary or master authoritative server, and the backup authoritative server is called the secondary or slave authoritative server. Administrators create and configure zone files and referral addresses on only the primary authoritative server. The secondary authoritative server copies them from the primary authoritative server. Only the primary server answers the queries. The secondary server remains ideal till the primary server is up. If the primary server fails, the secondary server acts as the primary server until the primary server comes online again. Both servers save the same zone files. Both servers use the same referral links configuration. 
both servers resolve queries for the same domain. For security reasons, if a company wants to hide its internal host's names and IP addresses, it can use a private DNS server. A private DNS server is open only for the company's devices. It accepts queries only from internal devices. External devices cannot access it. If the company wants to reveal the names and IP addresses of some hosts, it can put their records on a public DNS server. A public DNS server is open for all. Any device can send queries and receive information from these servers. Usually, companies use both public and private DNS servers. It uses a public DNS server for hosts that run services accessed by external users such as a web service. It uses a private DNS server for internal hosts. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them with us in the comment section given below.